Hello fellow sim racers. I was invited to attend the Grid launch event last week with a bunch of other content creators and journalists, most of whom probably had their content ready for the 9am embargo on Friday. I didn't, but you're here anyway, so let's take a look at the fourth title in the Grid series, or the tenth title in the Toka series, depending on where you start counting. I've been playing this series of games since 1997, and I must admit that I've got a massive soft spot for the Toka Grid race driver franchise thing. Even as my interest in sim racing developed more in the direction of the nerdy stuff, these are games that I keep going back to every time I need reminding that racing games can be pure, unadulterated fun. And that's exactly how I would describe Grid. Starting off with the cars, because that's the reason we do the pretend driving thing, Grid has a decent selection covering road and track vehicles from the 60s to the present day. And there are a good number of important cultural touchpoints featured, from the classic Mini, 60s sports cars, Group 5 monsters, to 90s touring cars and modern GT offerings. Furthermore, I believe it's currently the only non-mobile title to feature the current generation Daytona prototype in the guise of the Cadillac and Acura DPIs. Also worthy of note is the inclusion of content featuring His Excellency Lord Fernando. I'm guessing each of those cars is about six tenths quicker than the regular version. As for circuits, the selection is a little more limited, with a conservative offering of street courses, racetracks and hill climb stages. That being said, as with previous titles in the series, there are multiple layouts for each circuit and you can also drive every track in reverse, which does give a decent amount of variety. For me, the circuits are one of the real highlights of Grid. They look the part and critically they feel alive. They have an atmosphere and that's something that's missing from every hardcore racing sim I've ever played. Final lap. Aim to break into the top three. So let's address the elephant in the room. This is an arcade style title and the cars behave as such. The physics model has clearly been developed with fun as its primary goal, and that's no bad thing. If you've been paying attention, you've probably observed that all of the cars have a certain slidey quality to them, but it's intuitive and enjoyable. Each car class has a distinct personality, and the individual cars within the classes do have handling differences between the models. Importantly, as you ramp up the difficulty and turn off the driving aids, the driving experience does get more engaging. If you've played any of the previous games in the series, you'll know roughly what to expect here, but overall the driving model does feel tighter and more playable in my opinion. The front wheel drive cars in particular are great fun in grid, which is rarely the case in arcade races in my experience, and pinning the throttle to drive away from all of those tail happy moments is pretty satisfying. As a final note, all of my driving time was on an Xbox One controller as no wheels were available at the launch event, so I can't really comment on wheel support or force feedback. It's a Cody's racing game, so you know the gameplay is going to be pretty decent. In fact, compared to the usual stuff I feature on the channel, it's in a different league. First up, the career mode carries over a lot of what was great from the previous title with diverse series combined with great gameplay hooks to keep you engaged. The driver rivalry system returns as does team tactics which add a bit more dimension to the races than the standard finish as close to the pointy end as you can. The dev team have created 400 AI personalities with different driving traits which gives a bit more depth to the rivalry system and makes the idea of having an on track AI nemesis a little less hollow. The damage system is further improved from previous titles and honestly it's really very well done. Different materials break in different ways, carbon and fiberglass shatter while metals crumple, and road cars behave differently to race cars. Breaking a bonnet or boot latch on a road car is both comical and actually pretty believable. And this all begs the question, why can't we have this kind of level of damage in other racing sims? We had a quick chance to try the multiplayer system which looks well thought through. A new addition for this outing is skirmish mode which pits players in a destruction derby style environment while they're waiting for everyone else in the lobby. And this is an example of the care and attention that's been put into the title to make the gameplay as engaging and entertaining as possible.
More good news here, the graphics are much improved from the previous title. Environmental and weather effects are absolutely stunning. Car damage looks fantastic and the car interior shots don't look like a blurry mess as they did in Grid Autosport. However, some of the car models are a bit on the low detail side when compared to the standards set by other recent racing sims, particularly when it comes to the interiors. I'm very aware that this is a title that probably won't appeal to some of my audience. The driving dynamics are tuned with fun in mind and not slavish simulation of real world physics. But if you enjoy a good arcade racer alongside the more simulation heavy titles, then Grid has a lot going for it. This is a title that's going to be great fun as a pick up and play game, a fun sofa title, or as I see it, the perfect paddock cleanser when you just want to race some cars for fun. The nature of the title, and in particular its snappy UI design, make this the perfect game to quickly jump in a car and have some good fun racing without having to overthink things. And for me that's the most important aspect of Grid, it's just good fun. In the three hours of gameplay I had on both Xbox and PC, I managed to complete a couple of dozen short races in a wide variety of cars, something that's just not possible in the sort of titles I normally feature on this channel. So that just about wraps things up here. I've tried to keep things concise, so if I've missed anything or you have any other questions about Grid, then please let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, it would be great if you could hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you can see more content like this in the future. So all that's left to say is goodbye, thanks for watching, and enjoy the rest of your day.